Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and I am here today to show you how I made my recent card for the There's a Stamp for That Challenge. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I have shared in the past that I'm part of the creative team for the There's a Stamp for That Challenge group on Facebook. This is a group ran by my friend Danny. You know you've heard of her before. and every two weeks she puts a new challenge in her Facebook group that you can play along with and even though it's called there's a stamp for that you don't have to use a stamp at all the latest challenge challenge number 15 is love or hearts or monochromatic she always gives at least two or three options so there is usually something in your stash that you can play along if you would like to check out that challenge group and join the fun I will link it in the description box below. For today, I'm going to be going with the love and hearts theme, and it's almost a little monochromatic. You know what? We can maybe actually say it is. The technique that I'm going to use was inspired by a recent card that Gina K Designs created on her channel. I'll pop a picture of it up on screen now. I just loved how she did that masking of the love word stamp and had that rainbow kind of paint swatches in the background. Now I rarely, if ever, do masking. I actually can't think of the last time that I did it. So once again today it's going to be a little experiment and I hope that it goes well. Before I get started on the process video, I'm going to share with you the main tools and products that I'll be using. If I do add anything later on, I will be sure to let you know. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. First off, since I will be doing masking, I got out this roll of masking tape or paper that I bought on Amazon. This will be the first day that I use it, so that's nice to get something out from my stash. For my inks, I'll be using Versamark with Detail Silver Embossing Powder, and then I got out two Gina K Designs pink inks. I got out Passionate Pink and Dusty Rose. For my mask, I'll be using one of the heart dies from this Spellbinder set. I'll be using the third from the largest. And for my stamps, for my paint swoosh or brush or flourish, I'm not sure what you want to call it, I'll be using this little thin one here, and this is from the Simon Says Stamp Make Your Mark stamp set. I'm not sure if this is still available, but I know lots of companies do have these same kind of paint swooshy paint swatch backgrounds. For my sentiment, using an oldie but goodie from my stash, it is Signature Greetings 2 from Paper Tray Inc. This probably is not in production anymore, but I bet a lot of you could find a stamp in your own stash that says something about love. Today, my stamp will say, I love you. I really do. I did go ahead and pre-cut my cardstock. I have a passionate pink card base. I cut a piece of white cardstock to four and a half by three and a quarter, and a piece of gray for the mat to four and three quarters by three and a half. Now I will also put a piece of white cardstock on the inside of the card so it's easier to read my personal message. Let's get crafty. To get started on my card today, I'm gonna be cutting the mask. I pull a little bit of the masking tape off the roll and then I grab the heart that I'm gonna be using for my mask and just rough cut a little piece of tape around that heart. Once I have that cut out, I'm going to run this through my cuddle bug so I'm left with a nice die cut heart that I can use as a mask. 
Now that that's cut out, it's time to do some stamping. I placed my heart to the right of center on my piece of white cardstock, and now I'm gonna start stamping my stripes. Now the first one, I'm gonna stamp with Versamark and emboss with the detail silver. I'm doing this one first just because I will be doing the embossing. I almost forgot to use my embossing buddy, but I did pull that in and rubbed it across the card front. This is just gonna help the powder stick only to where I want it. I ink that stamp up, and then I put it over the heart where I want it to be on the final piece. It's just a little bit lower than center on the heart. Once that has been stamped, I do need to pull that mask off there before I do the embossing. I'm not sure if this is 100% necessary. I just wanted to make sure that when I poured that powder on there and heated it up, that it didn't make that heart mask stick to my cardstock. I did have to bring in a dry brush there to fix a couple spots since my embossing buddy couldn't get under where the mask was. Once that was ready, I brought in my heat tool and I heat set that silver paint swoosh. Before I continue my stamping, I do need to put my mask back in place. Since it was kind of formed to where the heart was before, this wasn't too hard. Once I had it where I thought it went, I pressed that down and then I brought in my other inks. For the rest of the heart, I will be using those two Gina K Designs pink inks. First, I'm gonna ink up my stamp with the darker one, the Passionate Pink, and stamp it just a little bit below that first swoosh. Once I have that stamped, I ink that up once again and I stamp it right above the first one. Once that second pink one was down, I brought in my rag, cleaned off my stamp, and now I'm going to stamp in the lighter or the dusty rose ink. The first one will go slightly below that first dark pink one, and that does go all the way to the bottom point of the heart. Once I have that done, I again, I ink it up with that dusty rose and I stamp above the dark pink. Now you'll notice that when I'm done here, there are still the two humps of the heart left. So what I want to do is do a stamp off of the dusty rose. Now I chose to do a stamp off because I didn't have a lighter pink that matched these two. I brought a scrap of white paper in so I could stamp off once with my inked up stamp and then I brought my stamp over to the top of my heart. Now it's pretty light, kind of faint to see on screen, but there is one up there and now you can see better where the heart shape is. And now it's time to pull that mask off and you can see I'm left with a white heart there in the center of all of those strips. Once the heart was done, it was then time to stamp my sentiment. I wanted to make it look like my sentiment kind of flowed with that first embossed stripe. So I am going to be stamping and heat embossing this with the silver powder as well. Once I had that stamped and the powder poured on there, I decided that I needed a little something extra. So this is where I brought in my dots peg stamp from Stamps by Judith. I ended up stamping and pouring powder over three of these impressions. Now, unfortunately, my camera cut off while I did that, but I was able to catch it before I melted the powder. Now the sentiment and all three of those dots are ready to be heat set. I just like the little bit of extra sparkle this gave the card and it tied in that silver embossing powder a little bit more. You might notice at this point that there's extra white space at the top and the left, whereas the bottom and the right side almost bleed off the edge. So I brought in my trimmer and I took a quarter inch off the top and the side. This meant my gray mat also had to be cut down, so I brought that in and I cut a quarter inch off two of the sides. And now that all of the pieces are ready, it was time to put my card together. This was a pretty simple process, so now is a good time to go ahead and ask you the QOTV or the question of the video. Before I get to the question, I do want to say thank you to everybody who's been taking the time to answer these. It has been such a joy getting to know a little bit more about you. Today's question is, have you ever done any masking before? Was it with stamps, a die cut shape, or other? Let me know below and don't forget to include the hashtag 
hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered and want me to see your response. I kind of already answered this earlier that masking is a very rare occurrence for me, but I do have to say that after today's card, I could really see myself doing this a lot more because I have lots of die cut shapes that I could use for masks. I decided there was still a little too much white space at the top of that heart. So to add a little bit more bling and color, I brought in some pink gems that I thought matched that passionate pink ink nicely, and I just scattered three around the sentiment. Here's a close-up look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made this quick and easy masked heart card. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.